Hey there, guys. Wanted to talk uh, really quickly about something that um, you don't uh, always talk about when it comes to games like Skatersoft, which is uh, roster management and sort of the things that you can do. I'm actually sitting here in the game right now. I'm going to change to a different season so that we don't mess up 1908 by doing something really silly. Um, let's see what I have. I have the uh, 82 season. So we'll take a look at the 82 season. And um, as soon as this opens up, I'll let you see this here. Um, so uh, you know that when I play Skatersoft, I'm totally in 1908 mode. And so it's going to be strange for me to look uh, right here at uh, Ricky Henderson's card and to look at um, all the action that's going on and think, wow, boy, they're giving out a lot of ones, a lot of home runs this year, aren't they? Um, so, and this is 82, right? Uh, just wait till I look at something in the 90s. So what I wanted to talk about today is roster management, how this works in the game. There are um, basically two different places where you can manage the rosters, three technically if you count the transactions. Um, and we'll go through um, each of these sort of in backwards order, I think is the easiest way to do this. We'll start with the transactions. Skatersoft NP3 does not come with built-in transactions. There are transactions that are available that guys have put together. Their accuracy, from what I've seen, unfortunately, is not really that high. And the problem is that it's set up so that you'd have to do that with the as-played schedule, which is kind of a problem. As-played schedule is pretty cool, right? We'll go over this a little bit later. It's actually a pretty cool thing to have. But the problem with the transactions is that if you're playing a league like I like to play, where you end up choosing your own lineups and you're using the as-scheduled schedule instead, um, you're going to have to do some editing and some messing around with the transaction file and all this stuff. In my 1908 replay, I do the transactions completely by hand. I don't mess around with this stuff, right? This is okay, but it's really only um, transfer to team from one team to another team and stuff like that. Injuries you're going to do by hand anyway. I figure, well, you might as well do everything by hand, right? Because, I mean, there's not... Anyway, it's, it's not really designed to do the sort of things that most other games can do, right? This is a thing that probably, if they want to do more of this, needs to be improved. We'll go back over here now, like I said, to this PT Asok, which is Player Team Association, which is um, a uh, corollary, sort of a supplement to the roster option. This is where you can take a player and stick him on another team. Now, there are two ways that this works, right? You have... Um, Player IDs, as you can see here on the left side, every player's got a player ID. Um, and interestingly enough, these guys who are 600 or whatever, or whatever, they are the, um, I guess you'd call them the XBs or the extra players that come with this. So when uh, Bill was uh, making these cards back in the good old days, he would have the base set with a certain number of players per team. And then you could get the extra cards if you wanted to have everybody carded, right? So like somebody like, I don't know, Mike Boddicker, you know, I see, I can't even look at the guy's uh, card here, but whatever. If you're looking at Mike Boddicker and you're like, why would I want to have this guy on my team? And you're playing like with cards and dice, you can just say, well, I'm not going to buy the extra cards. I don't care about, you know, John Shelby, Mike Boddicker, uh, Benny Alaya and guys like that. Most of us who do full season replays care a lot about these guys, right? And so the default really should be to include them. But I know it costs extra money when you're printing the cards and stuff. Of course, in a computer game, is not going to cost you anything extra. So that's why the player ID has all this jumping around. You can see it on every single team. So there's the oil can, right? Now, let's say that we wanted oil can Boyd to um, go on, I don't know, the Giants. The way that we would do this is you would take him here, you would take him away from two and put him over to 26 and click on Save Changes. And voila, what happens now is when we go over to Team 26, we will see oil can Boyd um, somewhere along the mix. Yeah, there he is. Oil can Boyd has been moved to the San Francisco, uh, San Francisco Giants. So if we're going to go play a game with the Giants, we go look over here. There he is. There's Boyd, and we can look at his card. He had three games pitched, one game started, 8.3 innings pitched, grade three pitcher. What a great pitcher. Um, anyway, that's the way that that works. And so let's say, oh, you know, we made a mistake. We didn't mean to do that, and I really don't want to save that because that would be really silly. It would be easy for me to forget that that happened. Um, we can go ahead and delete that and change it over to two, save changes, and Oil Can Boy now will be back on the Boston Red Sox. Let's look here and make sure. Yep, and there he is. He's now back on the Red Sox. That's the way that this works. That's the way that you set this up by hand. It doesn't take a long time. It's actually pretty efficient. When I compare this with the way that the same thing works on like Diamond Mine Baseball, this is much better thought out and I think works very, very well. Diamond Mine has things where you'll have like two different players, uh, versions of the same player for each team you played with and all this stuff. I know some people like that. 
I, I don't have much patience for that. I like this idea here where everybody's got their card and you just move the card from the one envelope or the one stack, the one pile, the one whatever to the other one, the one rubber band to the other one, you know, whatever game it is you're used to playing. And that's sort of what the idea is here. This is basically, it says player team association. It should be envelopes. You move a guy from one envelope to the next. In fact, if I were going to make a different version of this, I would have a graphical thing where you have all 26 envelopes with the team names on them. You can double click on them and you can pull a card out and then close the envelope and put it into another envelope, right? That would make more sense to me. So there you go. And uh, finally, we will look at the roster. So this is the way the roster management works. And this is the place where I spend a lot of time, you know, in my replay. So we're going to go back to Boston because we picked on him already. There's the oil can. This is nice because now you can see his card. See, how come I couldn't see that on the other screen? Anyway, there's always stuff that we have to improve. We want to make him inactive for whatever reason. Look at this. The game is not going to ask us if he's active or inactive, right? We can just save it. And there you go. Now he's off the roster. Now when we go to play a game, sorry, with the uh, Red Sox who have shown up over here for whatever reason, look, he is um, not able to be moved. I can't click on him. I can click on other guys. Can't do anything with Boyd because he comes up as not on the active roster. Um, if you click over on injuries, this thing will um, allow you to set it up so that you can say that you know he was injured from like whatever date to a different date. Again, that's not going to really help much with the way that I'm going to what creates uh, or that I would play the replay because you know I, I'm not going to use the schedule that's sort of written in. We'll go ahead and uh, we'll uh, save him and and uh, make him uh, active again. But, uh, you know, that's the way that you could set this up. If you had a replay and you had like a list of injuries or something like that, you could put that in so it um, changes everything automatically. So you don't have to do the thing that I do where I go through every day, really, when there's a transaction and I make changes manually. I would argue, again, that like, I mean, the amount of time that you save here by having it, the game do it automatically is completely offset by how little time it takes to do this in this game. This roster management, believe it or not, is actually one of the great strengths of Skatersoft because this is really, really simple. Now, there's no computer manager to do it, so you have to do it yourself. But as long as you have something planned out, you have something written down, you know what you're doing, it takes like seconds, right? I mean, maybe a minute or two if you have like a whole list of them, it's not that hard, it's not that bad, it's not that, you know, time consuming. I wish that the lineup selection feature in Skeetersoft were better. Lineup selection has a lot of weird problems, and there's a lot of stuff that just, like, drives me nuts. But this, in terms of uh, roster selection and roster setup, is actually really, really easy, and I think it's great. I wish more games were like this. So there you go. That's the way that you do it. It's the way that you um, uh, manage uh, rosters here in uh, Skeetersoft NP3. Um, I know that this is not a game that people um, know a whole lot about, not a game that people necessarily, um, uh, you know, talk about much or whatever. Um, and so I thought that it would be uh, pretty interesting for some of you to look at this and to sort of see a little bit of uh, what happens behind the scenes. Um, there's a couple other things, too, that I think we'll talk about here in the future about, uh, you know, stuff that um, you might not know, even if you're reading, like, literature about the game, right, that um, goes on uh, to make the game work. And it's it's all, I think, really interesting stuff. It's all stuff that, you know, can show you kind of what's possible with some of these games um, and uh, gives you sort of some sort of insight into what goes on to making a replay that works and to making it really successful. So there you have it, and I'll talk with you again tomorrow. Bye-bye.